there is the built-in purge inside Revit that cleans up the unused elements. Uh, there is also a very good PyRevit wipe toolbar that cleans yeah. uh, unused elements. And adding to that, we've added a list of our own purge tools. Uh, delete backups deletes if the element is if the uh, project is not work shared. It deletes all of the zero uh, zero one backups in your folder, right? Yeah, that's what it does. Uh, in the it, it, folder. Yeah. it just opens the folder browser. Um, then you kind of click the folder, and it will delete mm -hmm. any file that has this extension zero zero whatever dot uh, mm -hmm. rbt, which would be the backup files for both the models as well as the families and would you know a lot of times they would build up to gigabytes of uh, space and yeah really? i think it's quite a nice yeah, yeah yeah and it will go recursively into all the subfolders yeah okay. select folder there is one folder with the families um, and it picked up See? 436 files yes that's one gigabyte almost two gigabytes yes of the files that i'm probably not going to use anymore Amazing. Yes, very useful. Yeah. Should use it more often. The purge DWG line patterns uh, refers to those patterns that get carried over from AutoCAD imports and links, I think. And those are the ones that start with, I forgot. They have Board. a specific name. Yes, import. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Uh, even in this sample file from Autodesk, uh, there are seven imported uh, line patterns that can be removed. Yeah. In bigger projects, it can be hundreds. In the hundreds. Uh, so very routinely. useful because, uh, yes, manually you will have to select them one by one and clicking 300 times, accidentally deleting the one that you need uh, is something that I've done before and it's not pleasant. Purge imported dwgs is if you are uh, fed up with those imported dwgs in your project you don't want to see them anymore and from now on you will be responsible and using only links um you can just remove them from this one click uh, i think this one, one uh, still it has one <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> in the sample file Yes, well, maybe since it's a sample file and it's just one file, it makes sense to include it inside the file instead. Uh, yes, of, actually, you're right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Making it travel together with, with the link. But yeah, I'll forgive them for this one. Unused sheets will remove the sheets that don't have any viewports on them. Not in this project, but um, there can be some templates that have unused sheets that will never going to be used so you can just remove them with this tool unplaced rooms is self-explanatory yeah. unplaced areas same thing uh, same and unenclosed areas um, are areas that are placed but not enclosed it yeah. will also pick up those ones and, and then the, the nuclear option is the <laughs> nuclear one highlighted in red uh, to signify its uh, dangerous <laughs> potential um, consequences. Uh, it will ungroup all of the groups in your model. It may be useful before detaching your model and doing some transformations to it before archiving it or sending it somewhere or yeah, it's usually done on a detached uh, file. Uh, yeah. It will ask you uh, if you are sure you want to proceed and and look at that. And it will ungroup um, all of your groups. Yes. It will ungroup. It wouldn't remove them from the groups, right? It wouldn't purge the group um, necessarily. That's what no. we're discussing at some point. Yeah. Cool. So this is our. I think you glossed over one, which is also very handy, which is uh, removing unused scope boxes. Unused scope boxes. Yes. Um, scope boxes. Sometimes if you don't see a scope box in the view, you forget that it was created and it is just left there in the project. And when you open the project in a 3D, you have this uh, for a massive of amount of co green. boxes and it's quite kind of difficult to know which ones are in use and which ones were just left behind uh, so this tool will uh, purge the scope boxes that are not applied to any views and that are not used to uh, crop any levels or grids um, yeah no scope boxes in this model well i think i think we can wrap it up here to be honest i, I think there are a few more kind of self-explanatory functionality that we didn't go through list um, a lot of the list uh, templated tab right there 
helps you create a groups of objects um, in your file, some, something that you would probably do when you're creating a template. Uh, which has come very helpful for us, but it's it's designed to work out of the box immediately, so you can test them out. The select options, ours are select by design option, select um, plan bridges, as well as um, select by works, list by works, at list by design options, and those sort of things. Again, feel free to explore and figure them out yourselves. But for the most part, this is the toolbox. Um, in our about sections, I've, we've mentioned that maybe some of those functionalities already exist somewhere, and um, we're sorry if we are repeating other people's work, but, you know, it's, it's impossible to know exactly what's out there. And uh, yeah, we'll be hopefully updating this guy as we go in the future. Like we said, it's very easy with PyRevit to keep, you know, going through your code, adding stuff up. So yeah, hope. We hope you guys like our work. Let us know with any um, ideas, comments, and feel free to reach us at any point. Okay.